This is the Missing Persons Reports, brought to you by Jamaica Chronicles. The Spanish Town Police are seeking the public's assistance to reunite this woman who was found wandering along the Spanish Town Main Road in St. Catherine on Thursday, February 29. She gave her name as Shireen Foster. Anyone with information that can assist the police in reuniting Shireen Foster with her family is being asked to contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305, police emergency number or the nearest police station. The Kingston East Police believe they have uncovered a car-stealing ring after discovering several scrapped vehicles, car parts, and license plates in Melbrook Heights in the division. Deputy Superintendent of Police Colin McKenzie is appealing to anyone with information that can assist with the investigation to contact the Ellison Road Police at 876-928-1261. I'm Deputy Superintendent McKenzie, Crime, Crime Officer Kinson Eastern. With me is Deputy Superintendent Smith, Operations Officer Kinson Eastern Division, and a member of my PIU team, that's a proactive investigation unit. On Wednesday, the 28th of February, around at about 5.30 p.m., my PIU investigative unit was conducting their routine um, patrol in the area of Melbrook Heights when they discovered quite a number of motor vehicle parts and um, mechanical parts as also a quantity of license plates numbering about 15. So far, a preliminary investigation has revealed that these motor vehicles are suspected to be stolen from Steertown, Portmore, Duaney Park, and some other areas in the corporate area. We are seeking the public's um, assistance in identifying some of these plates, as also the motor vehicle. We want to urge the citizens to cooperate as best as possible, as this, we believe, is a stolen motor car ring. We are asking the public if en anyone has suffered such a loss we're asking them to contact the Elliston Road proactive investigative unit or myself at 997-884 or the police emergency 119 number and you will be so informed. A Jamaican man has been accused of shooting three police officers in Washington, D.C. in the United States, which had led to an hours-long standoff on February 14. He is 48-year-old Stephen Claude Radigan. According to U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, Radigan, who is in the country illegally, reportedly has a criminal history that dates back to 1995, including previous convictions for larceny and drug charges. ICE said he was deported to Jamaica in 2001 and re-entered the United States illegally. Radigan was arrested on February 14, hours after police attempted to serve a warrant at his home for alleged animal cruelty. The police report that a concerned citizen called the Washington Humane Society in early January over concerns of dogs being neglected at Radigan's home. When officers arrived, Radigan allegedly fired several shots through his front door, hitting three officers. He then barricaded himself inside and refused to come out for 12 hours. However, the standoff ended with the arrest of Radigan. As a result, Radigan faces three counts of assault on a police officer, cruelty to animals, and aggravated assault. Two Portland men had several charges laid against them following a robbery incident at a business establishment along the St. Margaret's Bay Main Road in the parish on Sunday, February 25. Charged are 50-year-old driver Anthony Hibbert, otherwise known as Blacks, and 52-year-old Richard Charles, otherwise called Polly, both of Snow Hill, Portland. 
Hibbert had robbery with aggravation, possession of a prohibited weapon, malicious destruction of property, and driving away motor vehicle without owner's consent, while Charles was charged with receiving stolen property. Reports from the Port Antonio police are that between 1 and 3 a.m., two men, one armed with a shotgun, entered the business establishment. They ordered the security guard on duty to assist them in loading the company's vehicle with construction material. Moments later, one of the two men contacted Hibbert, who entered the premises in a motor car and drove away the loaded truck with the car following behind. The police who were on patrol in the area intercepted the truck on a second visit to the premises, and an attempt was made to accost them. Hibbert drove away, crashed into a wall, and the occupants fled into nearby bushes. Acting on information, a subsequent operation was conducted, and Hibbert was taken into custody. Charles was later arrested after a large quantity of the stolen property was found at his residence. Both men were charged following a question and answer session on Tuesday, February 27. Their accomplices are still at large while their court dates are being finalized. An operation headed by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security resulted in the seizure of 318 firearms, 314 magazines, and almost 20,000 rounds of ammunition bound for CARICOM member states. Speaking at a media briefing on Wednesday, following his return from the 46th CARICOM Heads of Government Conference, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Raleigh said over half a million shipments were inspected during the exercise called Operation Hammerhead, which was led by U.S. Homeland Security in 2023. The exercise took place over the course of three weeks in September last year in an effort to crack down on the illicit firearms trade between the U.S. and CARICOM member states. He said as of data received in January 2024 during the operation, 600,000 packages destined for CARICOM were assessed and given increased scrutiny. Of that number, 4,600 were deemed to require enhanced inspection, and following these inspections, 318 firearms, 314 magazines, and 19,270 rounds of ammunition were found bound for the Caribbean. Hailing her grandmother, Rita Marley, as the Queen of Reggae. Actress and filmmaker Donisha Prentgast, in affirming that the Marley matriarch was the driving force behind her grandfather's success, legacy, and introduction to Rasta, she declared that there would be no Bob Marley without Rita Marley. Once there was a girl named Rita, who through her fierce determination and love of music, grew up to change the entire world through song. This is Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. On this episode, we'll be talking about the queen of reggae, my grandma, Rita Marley. Hey Rebels, my name is Donisha Prendergast. I am a filmmaker, writer, director, actress, and I'm also the granddaughter of Bob and Rita Marley. What makes my grandma a rebel girl is her fearless pursuit of herself. She never gave up from establishing herself as a musician to fulfilling her dreams of becoming a nurse to inheriting a legacy and a responsibility that was so much greater than she was. There would be no Bob Marley if there was no Rita Marley. She isn't often spoken about in the shadow of my grandfather, which is why you also have me to make sure that you guys know her. My grandma's story begins in Santiago, Cuba, where she was born on July the 25th, 1946. She moved to Jamaica with her mom when she was only a few months old, and they settled in Trenchtown. My grandma began her songwriting and performing career with the Solets, a group she formed with her cousin Dream and their friend Marnie. You know, growing up in Trenchtown, everybody lives in a big yard. And so everybody is always singing and dancing and creating. And so I think it was only natural 
that their voices would come together because they had been harmonizing together since they were children. They were performing for quite some time before they gained the attention of a very popular local music producer by the name of Cox and Dodd, who would then record one of their more popular hits called I Want to Go Back. My grandparents met when my grandmother was already on her musical journey and she was studying nursing at school. Um, and their paths kind of converged as, as they were both musicians, both recording, and both had similar interests, especially after she introduced him to Rastafari. And the rest is history. They changed the world together. My grandmother continued to rise to stardom and so some momentum started to gather around singles like Harambe, which means working together in unity in Swahili and who feels it knows it. People relate to her music because of the messages that call to your spirits, to see your own light, to work together and to be patient with yourself and your own evolution. I think my grandma would want to see her legacy preserved in a way that brings light to many of the things that she's done quietly, from her early active engagement in the music scene in Jamaica to her transformational work in communities in Africa. In the background right here, this is an award that she got um, from the government of Jamaica, they finally recognized who she is. And I think that's important because for a long time, I think maybe she didn't feel seen. So that's what makes my grandma a rebel girl. Through it all, she never gave up on who she was. So now that I've told you a little bit about my grandma, it's time for you to do your research. Rita Marley, she's on every song that Bob Marley sings. So listen closely and you'll hear her voice too. Promise? Okay. Okay. All right, Rebels, thank you guys for listening. That was my grandma's story, Rita Marley, the queen of reggae. Keep creating, keep staying true to yourself and stay rebel seen one love